Welcome back, Mountaineers. You're watching The A-Game. I'm Noah C. Cornelius. And I'm Chris Daniels, and we're here to catch up on anything and everything App State Sports this past week. This week, we'll recap all of our games and discuss some topics about the upcoming games and players. All this and more coming to you now. After their win against ECU last week, the Mountaineer football team traveled down south to play the University of Miami, falling just short in a 23-25 loss. The game stayed neck and neck from beginning until end, but the Hurricanes played little too well for the App State Mountaineers to take home the win. Chase Bryce played another solid game and completed 21 for 34 of his passes to throw for an impressive 199 yards. Cameron Peeple rushed for 95 yards and a 28-yard touchdown, while Jalen Virgil scored on a 100-yard punt return for a Mountaineer touchdown no one will soon forget. The Mountaineer defense also held their own with DeMarco Jackson's 10 tackles, TD Roof's 2 sacks, and Caleb Sperlin with a blocked field goal and 7 stops. So, what are y'all's reaction to the game? I thought this game was pretty good until the end. Mm -hmm. Obviously, App State kind of lost it at the end, but... Overall, I feel like they had a really good game. Yeah, guys like Chase Bryce um, do have a great game. And of course, at the end of it all, they're going to talk about how App State lost that, lost um, away. But honestly, it doesn't do anything to their record. It doesn't hurt their pride, doesn't do anything. Um, App State had 2019-2020 season. They had 7-1. and one. They won Sunbelt. So obviously, App State has the will to win. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the Mountaineers uh, played very well on both sides of the ball with, you know, Chase Bryce, Cam Peoples really doing a great job on the offense. And, you know, DeMarco Jackson having those 10 tackles and TD Roof also having a great game uh, on the defensive side. Uh, I know that Sean Clark, he said after the game that, you know, it was a gut-wrenching loss, but it was a loss that that they will put behind them and that they will keep moving forward. And I know that he said that the team is really excited to be back in Boone this coming weekend to play Elon, and they're really excited to get back to the Rock. Yeah, I know that the Mountaineers are definitely excited to get back to the Rock. But talking about Miami just a little bit more, it was kind of crazy to go all the way down to Miami, an ESPN-ranked team, and almost embarrass them on their own home field. I mean... I talked about this lap last episode, but the Mountaineers are some of the best fans in the nation, and there were definitely some in Miami. So to come out of it with just a two-point loss, winning at multiple points in the game, I think we made a national statement. Yeah, really definitely. Did. I think that the like one of the highlights of the game was definitely Jalen Virgil's 100-yard uh, kick return. That mm -hmm. was just like an awesome moment to have like under the Mountaineers' belt. So that was awesome. Yeah, and speaking of The Rock, because you mentioned Elon coming up this week, actually. I'm really excited to be back. 100% capacity at home, The Rock. I'm a transfer sophomore, so I've never been to a home-home Appalachian State football game. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see all the traditions and to see all, all of my friends and the energy that's going on. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, here at The Rock, it's amazing. It's, it's one of the best college football games you'll ever go to, trust me. But I want to touch back on um, how Miami head coach Manny Diaz, he said that, that the teams on the road, when, they're on, when App State's on the road, they choose to dominate. They always dominate. Mm -hmm. But th after that loss, I'm pretty sure they're feeling a little down. Mm -hmm. But when they go back on the road to face Georgia State October 1st, I'm pretty sure they're going to come out with a vengeance. Yeah, absolutely. App State, whether it be home or away, they've definitely played some fantastic games. Absolutely. The team will have to forget the loss quickly to play their 1-1 one one Elon in their home opener this weekend right here in Boone. The Mountaineer volleyball team hosted UNC Charlotte, Bellarmine, and Wake Forest last week in the Mountaineer Classic Round Robin, falling to all three schools over the weekend. The biggest fall of the weekend was in their first match to Charlotte when the Mountaineers were able to take a set a set away from the 49ers and lost 3-0. to zero. 
App State had trouble gaining any momentum and lost their second match to Bellarmine 2-3 in their closest match of the weekend. In their final match, the Mountaineers fell once more, taking the third set against the Deacons, but ultimately ending the weekend without a win. The Mountaineers are now 3-6 on the season and will be traveling to Greenville, North Carolina this week to play the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, Gardner-Webb, and ECU in the ECU tournament. So what do you guys think the volleyball team need to do to turn things around heading into ECU this weekend? Well, for starters, I just think that they need to get a winning mentality, if that makes sense. You know, we lost 1-3 to three at Wake Forest, 2-3 to three versus Bellarmine, and 0-3 to three at Charlotte. It's extremely so start to the season, losing the last five of six. And I'm not trying to rat on anybody, but you just need to pick yourself back up and have a winning mentality, you know? I mean, we shouldn't be losing this many games, you know? Like, I don't care what sport it is. Like, App State sports as a whole has a winning mentality, you know? And to go out on that court and to lose three straight, basically, it's kind of embarrassing. And I know that things happen, you know? Like, they're, they have had close games. So just need to execute on that, you know? I'm sure that all the girls on that team have a winning mentality, but they just need to capitalize it and they just need to keep having that energy and not get disrupted whenever they lose. Yeah, I know that their overall record is now three and six. And they, they went into the strong sets, like they had really strong sets against Bellarmine and Wake Forest. But I just think that their, that their mentality and their energy just kind of like lacked as the sets went on. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was like crucial in like the win and the loss between the difference between that. And I think that going into EC, they're really gonna have to keep their energy up and their spirit up. I know growing up as an athlete myself, I always relied on my teammates to really bring that enthusiasm and that's like teammates feed off of that, so. Exactly, and I feel like um, even though the team lost three in a row, I feel like good teams lose. They, they have to lose. App State's lost, football's lost, mm -hmm. basketball's lost. Um, most of the teams lost at App State, but I feel like they have the chance to be able to elevate from this because when, you at the, when you're at the bottom, you feel hopeless. But coming into ECU into a tournament setting, I'm pretty sure they'll have it in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I 100% agree with mm -hmm. you there. I think, you know, I don't think that this is going to be the same energy throughout the entire season. It definitely should not be. And, I, you know, they got a good coach and they got some great players on that team. And I think, you know, with the right leadership and the right mentality, they could go into this weekend and really win, you know? Yeah, they have a lot of returning players. And I feel like, like I said, they started off slow, but I feel like it's just going to go up from here. Mm -hmm. When we come back, we will take a look at cross-country teams' upcoming meet. Hi, neighbor. I'm Ryan Perrone. Join us every Tuesday at 10 a.m. as we explore the people, events, and organizations that make the high country so special. You can tune in on channel 198 for Spectrum customers, channels 20 or 1020 for SkyBest customers, or channel 23-3 on campus. Until then, bye, neighbor. Welcome back. Coming off of their stellar performance last week, both the men's and the women's cross-country teams have the week off from competition before another home meet at the Don Kennedy Trails at State Farm. Both teams will be competing in the Fire Tower Project and are both projected to place high in the meet. So guys, who should we look out for this weekend? I think you should look out for Isaac Benz. Um, obviously, he's one of the best runners here at App State, and the stats have proven that. So I feel like he's the guy that you should look for the most. Yeah, I definitely think that, um, well, there are six men from the team that placed in the top 25 in this last meet that they had. And I definitely think a person to look out for, as well as Isaac Benz, is Daniel Smith, because he was named Sunbelt Men's Cross Country Runner uh, last Wednesday, which is huge for the team. Um, and then Ryan Brown and Isaac Benz, of course, they were all conference honorees last season. Mm -hmm. Um, also, women's cross country, sec they placed second in the Covered Bridge Open, and eight of the female runners uh, also placed in the top 40. So, what do y'all have? What do y'all think about that? I mean, it just goes to show that they are really passionate, and I mean, the men's and the women's, I, it just goes to show how passionate they are about this cross country team. You know, like, it's taken a lot of years for this team to really get on their feet, you know, and I mean, like, really, really on their feet. 
And it shows. I mean, like, having a guy like Isaac Benz on your team, Daniel Smith, Ryan Brown, and the whole women's cross-country team as a whole placing second, you know, like, those are things that get your whole organization elevated. And I think this year is going to be great with no COVID restrictions, or very minimal, I should say. They are going to absolutely pop off if that's what the kids say, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I think that Izzy Evely and Lila Peters are two people to look out for. Izzy Evely was first team all Sun Belt last season, and Lila Peters was third team all Sun Belt honoree last season. So I keep an eye out for them. Yes, and I feel like this is exactly what App State Sports embodies. I feel like winning culture is what we embody, and they're doing exactly that. Yeah, absolutely. And up next, we'll talk about women's soccer. Coming off for their loss to Wake Forest, the women's soccer team traveled to South Carolina to play Warford and then traveled to Miami to play FIU, beating Warford 2-1 and FIU 1-0. In their first game, App State took an early lead and held it when Brecken Monteith scored after seven minutes of play, and Kirsten Seeley scored after nine. The team's defense played a near-perfect game, only allowing five shots on goal and goalie Kiri Eagleson making four saves during the game. In the game against FIU, the Mountaineers clinched the victory over the Panthers in a close 1-0 game. The lone goal came from Birkin Monteith, who scored her second goal of the weekend. App State goalie Kiri Eagleson had a flawless showing during the game, making 11 saves on the day to keep the Panthers scoreless through 90 minutes of play. The Mountaineers are now 4-2-1 on the season and will start conference play tonight in Conway against Georgia Southern. Stay tuned as we discuss the field hockey team's first win over a ranked team. Hola, soy Brenda de Buenos Dias Boone. Así que venga a pasar sus mañanas con nosotros y sintonice en el campus o en los canales locales. Nos vemos pronto y que tengas un buen día, Boone. See you soon and have a good day. Welcome back to the A game. Over the weekend, the App State field hockey team hosted number 24 James Madison University and traveled to Charlotte to play Ohio State, beating JMU 2-0 and losing to Ohio 0-2. In their first match, the Mountaineers made history and beat a nationally ranked school for the first time in the program's history. App State took the lead over the Dukes when Frederick Stegen scored in the second quarter with a corner goal. The nail in the coffin for JMU came in the third when Carly Siaco connected with the net for another App State goal. In their second match, the Mountaineers fell to Ohio State in another defensive heavy game. App State was only able to fire off three shots on the Buckeyes goalie and was never able to connect with the net. Starting goalie Addie Clark showed out for the second time over the weekend and recorded double digit saves from the Ohio offense for the most saves she has had made in a single game this season. The Mountaineers are now 2-3 and three overall and will be playing against Miami University, who was ranked number 21 going into the season. What could the first ever ranked win for the field hockey team mean for the rest of their season, y'all? I feel like the very first national win for them is amazing because it shows that they have the grit and the grind to be able to defeat some of the best people in the world. Mm -hmm. So obviously this is a great start. Obviously them starting out hot is gonna be great for them for the rest of the season. Yeah, I definitely think that JMU being a top 25 team and them coming out on top is awesome. And the first quarter being a scoreless quarter just shows that the intense defense was being played on both sides of the ball. And if we can keep that intensity going, I think that is going to be great. And speaking of which, you talked about the first quarter goalkeeper Addie Clark had four saves on goal and one block in the first five minutes of the game. And I got to talk to Coach Dawson after the game because I was there, and she talked all about the defense. You know, the, the Mountaineers took less shots than JMU, but they made their shots count. And that's a really impressive feat when you think about how many times JMU was shooting on the goal. So for Addie Clark to have her amazing defensive performance and for the Mountaineers to be able to capitalize offensively, that's a good sign for the rest of their season too. Yeah, I think definitely two people to watch out for are Frederick Stegen and Carly Siaco. They were the ones that had the two goals to win the game. And mm -hmm. so definitely keep an eye out for them going into them playing Miami. And I feel like if App State has the great defense just starting out this season, 
and beating a nationally ranked team with this great defense, I feel like they'll be able to carry it out for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a slow start for the field hockey team, but it seems like they are about to get hot. That's all the time we have for you this week, sports fans. I'm Noah C. Cornelius. I'm Allie Powell. And I'm Chris Daniels. Tune in next week to stay up to date on all things Appalachian State sports.